talk. And the next Thank speaker you. is um, Esteban Rodriguez. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hi, Esteban. Hi, nice to see you. And yeah, you. yeah. So I was maybe you can start share your screen on it. Give me a sec. So Esteban is from the University of Chile, from the group of uh, Luis Foa Torres. And yeah, um, the panel is yours, Esteban. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, good evening, I guess, for everyone, and for our fellows from Europe too, especially. Uh, I want to thank the organizer for giving me the chance and the space to show what we do back here in South America. Um, my name is Esteban Rodriguez. I'm a freshly graduated PhD. Uh, PhD. <laughs> I, I, I'm still not used to use this, this, this title, but uh, under supervision of uh, Professor Luis Fua Torres, uh, we were been working with uh, alongside with Dr. Matias Verdakin. And I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, yet another um, topic related to flocket systems. So the, the, the title of my talk is Spin Polarized to, to Enable Photocurrents. I guess the very th first three words are more or less self-explanatory. So maybe the photocurrent is, is something that I will try to emphasize a little bit more. Let me get the last pointer. Yes. So, therefore, I will refer to driven and flocket systems in both in interchangeable way. So, whenever you you hear flocket, I will mean systems that are uh, uh, temporarily driven. So, perhaps if you are in the topological gang and the, in the alongside with the two dimensional materials, you have already heard about. Uh, shining uh, graphene nanoribbons in order to reach the quant anomalous quantum hole effect, much like in the Haldane model. So this is a quintessential example of using light as a topological switch. So in this sense, we are trying to say that a uh, flocket system can be used to uh, create topological states. Nevertheless, uh, in this talk, I will talk. Uh, I will take uh, another path and we will try to modify topological states. So in the left-hand side of the, of the screen, particularly right here, you can see the typical band structure of a topological insulator having the balance band and the conduction band bridged by uh, edge states carrying uh, each opposite spins with uh, spin up and spin down in one border and with opposite direction the same. But we know that these states are robust uh, when you don't, we don't, you don't perform any topological phase transition. But also, since these states are also very robust, it's very hard to modify them to make, make them whatever we want to do. So the main message of this talk, and this is perhaps the, the, the most important slide in, uh, along all the, the, the the talk is that we can uh, attenuate one of the H states to carry some different, uh, uh, some particular spin species in a transport setup. So in this case, we will be talking about using external driving to modify selectively native properties. So today we are not concerned about creating topological states, but we want to modify them. How we will arrive to some conclusions about if we can do this, we will use the transport signatures by using Landau beauty care schemes. So this is the outline of the talk. First, I will address some topological things that I, 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 I guess more, most of them will be familiar for you already, but there are some things that uh, it is convenient to, to have in mind. Then I will jump a little bit about flocket theory. Uh, the last talk already provided some ground on it. And uh, in three, four, and five, we will address some original results that we have been conducting as part, part of my PhD research. So let's start with topological quantum measure. 
a few things we need to recall. Uh, just for a brief historical context, we, we have heard about the interion quantum hall effect where, the, where Klaus von Klitzing, where he was working in Grenoble at, uh, I guess in 1980, yes, 1980, here I have that information. And he was working on two-dimensional electronic uh, gases and, uh, under high magnetic, magnetic fields. And when he tried to measure the hole resistance, he noticed that this uh, hole resistance developed this plateau structure when he tried to increase the magnetic field. And this plateau structure was exactly quantified in high integer numbers. Over here, it's the formula of the uh, hole conductivity. Uh, yes, hole conductivity. Uh, but over here, it's depicted in the inverse of this number. However, the reason behind that this is already quantized is because Fowles uh, discovered that this is due to some uh, topological phenomena underlying. And after this proposal, uh, Duncan Halden proposed a model to reach the integer quantum hole effect, uh, not, uh, not needing the high magnetic field. So this is how it goes. This is just making the long story short. Under certain conditions, the following number that depends on the, only in the aging states of the Hamiltonian, which is the quantity F uh, um, with an integral over the whole virulent zone, is a topological invariant. Of course, I, I will not dig into the details what are these certain conditions because we can, we can make a whole lecture about this, but this result implies something that is really uh, deeply rooted in the, uh, all the topological insulators theory, which is the bulk boundary correspondence. And the bulk boundary correspondence implied the existence of robust edge states, which is something that we really like since we are talking about topological systems and this event is related to topological behavior. But the way I want to convey the message of how we try to think about them is that this not this does not allow, uh, this, this bulk boundary correspondence does not allow us to control them. It imposes a constraint. And what is this constraint? Well, th we are thinking that this bulk boundary correspondence will tell us how many edge states are living under the surface of a topological insulator. But uh, this number is already fixed by the aging states of the Hamiltonian. So, if we have a typical band structure of the Haldane model, we can see something like this for the zigzag uh, configuration. We have in blue and red the edge states that are predicted. So in this case, we talked the, about the topological invariant being one. And here we have a black dot for the state in the bulk bands, uh, which does not, uh, does not show any special profile of localization. So, Let's keep this picture in mind because this will appear uh, a lot along in this talk. We will be talking always when we announce our results in models that resemble the Kenan Mele, Ken Mele's uh, model for Zeta 2 topological insulator. Over here, we have the Hamiltonian in the second quantization language, having the first term related to the uh, nearest neighbor hoppings with amplitude t. The second uh, next nearest hoping, uh, taking a, uh, account of the spin orbit interaction among uh, between uh, the, the same same lattice species, and we have also the rash of spin orbit coupling, which is a term that does not conserve a spin quantum number in the said direction, and this is a first uh, neighbor hoping with amplitude uh, complex amplitude two. And we therefore, uh, at last, we have uh, the, um, the segment of mass term that is breaking the uh, inversion symmetry uh, between the both different uh, sub lattice species. So, first, we will try to get rid of this term. We will neglect the rush back coupling and the first part of the result. And we will notice that whenever we uh, neglect this term, we can, we can notice that the, uh, the Hamiltonian of the k meta model now splits in two independent Haldane models. 
And in this sense, we will treat all our systems as a Haldane model with spin up, and we will try, uh, we will treat this uh, lower lower right block as the Haldane model with the spin down. So each block represents the Haldane model with opposite spin. So this is an information we will have to keep in mind uh, for the next uh, slides. So now, just uh, just to uh, to tell you why we are neglecting the the Russian spin orbit coupling, take the van structure now with color it with the spin polarization. In the, in the picture A, we have uh, the the system without any Rashba coupling whatsoever. And in B, we have a, a, a moderate uh, uh, Rashba coupling uh, turned on. And we see that the, in this case, the spin polarization is, is, uh, is sharply one or minus one in this scale, where blue will be always the spin down and red will be spin up. And in this case, we can see that this is start to depolarize. So this quantity here, which is uh, each of the points that compose these plots, it starts to uh, make some uh, indefinition of the spin. As long as we are, we are increasing the intensity of the rush for spin orbit coupling, we can see that the uh, bulk band starts to depolarize. But we see that uh, in the case of the topological edge states, the spin polarization remains uh, really, really sharp in, uh, in one or minus one. So just as a summary of this slide, we see that the rush spin orbit will induce spin flip processes that will be important in the case of C, which is the case we will treat at the end of this talk. And for small spin polarization, this is not uh, for the small value, uh, values of the rush spin orbit coupling, the spin polarization is not sig significantly affected like in this case. And the edge states will, uh, will survive even for larger values with the spin polarization uh, unaffected. We can also uh, quantify this, this property of this, uh, the topological edge states having this spin by looking at the topological phase diagram of a Zeta-2 topological insulator, considering the Rashba coupling. And here we have the trivial regime and non-trivial regime. In this talk, I'm not interested to, to tell you what is the underlying topological invariant of this system, but just to tell you that the robust of, uh, the wonder is to keep the robustness of uh, these topological states have to fulfill these two conditions. If you go uh, away from these conditions, you will fall into the trivial regime. And a last ingredient before I start to announce some uh, results of our research is something called the circular decrease in the Haldane model. Suppose that you have a, a ordinary graphene and you have the uh, brilliance of this, graph, of this graphene and you try to understand how graphene tries to absorb light. So we can compute the transition rate going from the conductance bands to the valence bands due, due to the external potential due to this uh, circular polarized light. In the case of the ordinary graphene, some profile like this is shown. This doesn't show any, any, any special feature because the, the, the transition rates in the direct cones have some specific value that it, it's not interesting, but the thing that is interesting is coming right now, is that in the case that you have a Haldane model, which we will associate with the spin up block I was talking in the previous slides, will have this profile more or less in the topological regime. But whenever you take the time reversal pair of this plot, in this case, the spin down associated, when you look to the, uh, the transition rate of the absorption of light uh, in, the, in the neighborhood of, of any direct cone, you can see the spin down does not absorb light, absorb light, whereas the spin up does absorb light. So in this case, we say that the Haldane model in the topological phase absorbs light, but its sign reversal pair does not. This will be a really important property to, in order to see how uh, the band structures that we will study will behave. And just to mention a detail that uh, might be relevant, that this, this selection rule, this optical selection rule was proposed for bulk, but it's still valid for uh, ribbon configurations. 
So now, uh, just a, a brief uh, look into the flock theory and quantum transport, which is the, sub, the theoretical substrate to, to illustrate all of our results. And as G uh, Gerardo was, uh, was telling us in the last, uh, in the previous talk, the flock theory means no, it's nothing else more than the block theory. So when we have a, a translational invariant Hamiltonian, we know we can diagonalize and find a, a complete agent, agent set, a, a agent vector set that will diagonalize and we will have a, some uh, quantum number which will be the momentum. In the case of Flockett theorem, we are, and I will use Flockett and from now on just to refer to the time dimension, we have more or less the same we have all, all the uh, agent states can be written in this following form, which are based time of uh, a function that we will call the Flockett function. And the number uh, epsilon alpha, we will refer it as the quasi energy. Why quasi energy? Because this energy is now, uh, it's, uh, it's now defined uh, between, between these two bounds. So if we replace the Flockett answer into the uh, Schrodinger equation, we will arrive to an equation, something like this. This agent value problem with the Flockett Hamiltonian written, uh, which is defined in this way, will be an static problem. Why? Because since both the Hamiltonian and the Flockett functions are periodic in time, we can decompose them in the basis of periodic functions, such as we have the, uh, the in the basis that all the periodic functions can be decomposed in the Fourier components. So any Flockett function since it's, since it's periodic in time can be written in this following way. When we separate all, this, the, all the components that are static with the, with the complex exponential, as well as we can do the same with the uh, Hamiltonian separating both uh, the, the, the time dependence and the static dependence. So, when we can, we can write the Flockett Hamiltonian, HF, uh, in this basis, and we will arrive to the matrix form uh, written here. The Latin index will denote what we will call the extended zone or the replica space. We will see the structure uh, in a more concise way in the following uh, in the following slide, but just I just write here just to stress the uh, and to emphasize the fact that we have here that all the time dependence just cast in this um, uh, Latin index and all the dependence in the, in the static phases, the space will be uh, uh, denoted with this Greek index. Lambda hence can be uh, all the orbital phase, uh, the orbital, orbital space can be the spin uh, and any any other any other base in the static space. So here is the is the shape. And why we call this the, the extended zone? Because when we see the structure of this Hamiltonian, we can start write this explicitly. And all the static copies that are over here will be represented for this uh, in, in this way. Therefore. All the system that we have uh, in principle in the uh, uh, real space and time dependence will be mapped to something that it will be uh, the static system and copies and the coupling between copies will, uh, will account the uh, time dependence. So any of the terms that are off diagonal in this matrix will be the time dependence. So now time is promoted to a third synthetical special dimension, which will be called the extended zone. So the first question that this might rise is, uh, how many of these replicas do you need in order to uh, get a, any, any physical meaning of the, the signals you will get from these computations? So their answer is, uh, as, ma uh, as many as you need, uh, once the convergence of this signal will, uh, will be proved to be converged. So uh, in, it will depend explicitly in the problem that you are addressing and in the frequency, uh, because the frequency will always regulate how much their, the replicas are, are coupled. And just in order to, uh, to give a brief detail about the quantum transport for driven systems, 
Uh, we have here the formula in, uh, for a two terminal configuration for uh, the current average over one cycle. This more or less looks like a lambda or beauty care in the case when we have the static systems and we want to uh, compute the current. But there's a little bit of uh, something different because we have this superscript n. What is, the, what is this TRLN, uh, for instance? Well, as you might guess, it, might, it is the uh, transmission probability from going to right to the left. And this N it stands for the photons exchange with the uh, external field. So from going from the terminal I to the terminal J and exchanging N photons. So in this case, when we have the central region irradiated with our, uh, with our periodic potential, we will have something like this in order to study the, uh, any, any of the uh, transport signals. You have to define an input channel. We will usually define as the elastic channel without any exchange of any photons going, in this case, from the left. And the complete transmission over going from the left to the right will be the transmission going from left in the channel zero to the right with the channel uh, changing one plus one photon. So to say we, we are absorbing or emitting. And also we will have, of course, the process which will be elastic. So in this sense, this formula right here imposes something really different from the uh, usual landauer beautiker scheme. Because in the usual landauer beautiker scheme, when we have two terminals, we have just these components when we go to the linear regime. Why? Because we know that the transmission going from left to the right and right to the left is exactly the same because of the two terminals. But in the case of locket, when we have the extended zone, we have many more channels allowed. So this rule does not apply anymore. So we have another component that will, will appear just because of uh, the appearance of the uh, and the inclusion of this uh, uh, external uh, time periodic uh, field. So this is the usual two terminal contribution, which is dependent on the semi sum, which is no more than pl this plus this over two. But this will be the pumped current of, and also called the uh, photocurrent. And this is due to the dry external driving, which is depending in the semi different difference. And in this case, we are talking about some non reciprocity because the probabilities from going to right to the left and left to the right are, uh, are different. Now, when we have all this extended zone, we know that we have uh, uh, static copies that will, will in turn affect what is the structure of the, the spectrum. So let's think with zero amplitude coupling. So when we think about zero amplitude coupling, we are saying that all of the diagonal elements of the Floquet matrix are zero. So in the case when the frequency is it's, uh, it's, uh, greater than the bandwidth, we have an image like in the image A, where all the static copies does not mer merge with each other. So in this case, nothing happens, and this is the, the, the static limit. When we are, we are moving towards the, uh, the region where the frequency is comparable to the bandwidth, we can see that we are allowing some hybridizations. In this case, we have hybridization between the bulk bands of different replicas. But the most interesting case and, uh, that we will use later on will be this case right here. When we allow hybridization from the uh, continuum of the higher order replicas with the edge states allowing this kind of hybridizations. When we will uh, move from the zero amplitude coupling, we will see what happens in this case when the light is, is, uh, is linear polarized or circular polarized. So this is a fact we have to uh, already keep in mind too, that there is a hybridization of the edge states with the continuum provided by higher order replicas. Once the provided that the, uh, that the frequency is, uh, is in the right value. So in this sense, uh, of course, you might say that there's a little bit of a fine tuning because you have to move to the regime that you want to hybridize some states with others.
So now we will jump to some uh, original results of all the ingredients that we were mentioned before. First of all, I need to introduce the, uh, the transport setup that we are, we are thinking about. We will have a, uh, our CETA2 topological insulator. We will have two terminals, the left and the right, and we will have the laser going perpendicular to the, to the uh, topological insulator sheet. So we will think about the laser uh, slowly decaying towards the towards the uh, all the leads in order just to lessen the the mismatch between the the, the wave function going from here and uh, and to yes just just to lessen the, the mismatch problems and, and make the transport measurement easier so we will have this uh, uh, vector potential that will account the presence of the external field uh, here i have a small typo this is a y over here and the parameter capital phi, phi will control the, the kind of laser we will use in. In the case we will set capital phi to zero, we will have linear polarized light. And in the case we have, uh, I'm sorry, if this is zero, this is circular polarized light. In the case pi over half, this is uh, linear polarized light. How do we account the, uh, the presence of the laser of the system? We will use the pi or substitution which is uh, the, the minimal coupling version for the tie binding model. So any of the hoppings that we will compose our system will be corrected by this phase factor with this linear uh, line integral between all the, all the hoppings of, uh, of our lattice. So now we will include the light and we will turn the, uh, we will turn on the, the coupling potential and we will have the following band structure and spectrum right here. This is one of the main results of the, of the work. We will have by the linear polarization that all the states that are from the topological, um, topological native states will hybridize with, uh, with higher order replicas. In this case, you can see this blurred line over here showing that this state will uh, hybridize with it. And in this case, you will have uh, another blur line here. But check it out. We have another line that it's not affected by this because we were already at a staggered potential in order to make this cone uh, not as wide open as right here. So the hybridization we are favoring is that making this topological edge states to hybridize with the higher order replicas. And this blurring suggests that the transport over this branch will be suppressed. We have the same conclusion for the case of the linear polarization for the spin down. And this case is not surprising since we are not breaking time reversal symmetry. So the linear polarization will not make any different uh, difference between the spin up and the spin down. But some other interesting thing happened with the circular polarization. In the case of circular polarization, for the case of a spin up, we have the very same conclusion with, uh, with the spin up in the case of linear polarization. We'll have this line blur. So if you set the Fermi energy right this level, you will see that you will have no transport whatsoever in this branch, but you will have transport with this state. But if you recall correct, if you recall from the previous slides, remember that in the case of linear polarized light, we know that the Haldane model will absorb light for one spin and for the other spin won't absorb light whatsoever. So in this case, we'll see that the line is not blurred. So if you set a Fermi energy right in this level, you will see that you will have both, both ways allowed when you perform transport computations. So that is the next task, the next task we will uh, do right now. So in order to construct this plot, you have to recall that you will uh, have a hybridization with higher order replicas, and also you will have the presence of the circular decreasing, which is portrayed right here. Uh, okay, so I think I already said this. In the case of uh, um, the flocket spectrum, remember we are adding some uh, semen of terms in order to make some, uh, some gaps wide open, while the, in, the, in this case, and this case will be uh, not, as, not as open. So this is the main plot of the work. We'll have the transport conclusions over here. 
And we will see that in the case of this linear polarization in different regions, we will have one way regions because of this blurring of the band structure we show in the last slide. So in this case, check out the linear polarization. We are not breaking time reversal symmetry. So therefore the pumped current or the photocurrent that we will talking about uh, in, in the case of uh, quantum transport will uh, cancel each other because you are not breaking time reversal symmetry. So no current can flow. And in this case, we are talking about uh, an, a, speed, a pure spin current. In the case of circular polarization though, we can see that there is uh, some uh, one-way current in, in C. Check out uh, this region, for instance, we have from left to right. But what happens when we look at the spin down? We know that this spin down doesn't like absorbing light. So this has uh, some uh, sort of a ballet, but still the, the uh, transport contribution is still quite large, less than one, but it's still not, uh, not, as, not that neg negligible. So in this case, the pumped current will arise because we will have time reversal symmetry broken. And in this case, when we arrive uh, at uh, energies like this, we see that we have a small contribution of a uh, spin down, a spin, yes, a spin down current and also spin up. And in this case, we see that more or less uh, uh, our computation shows that we have a spin down uh, a spin up, sorry, uh, polarized photocurrent with an 18% per of uh, polarization. So this is because both ways are allowed with the circular decreasing. So when the time reversal is broken uh, uh, in the circular polarization, we have a spin polarized charge current, but when we have the time reversal symmetry preserved in the case of linear polarization, a pure spin polarized current arises. So just to fix ideas, we will have these following images. In the case of a static, we know that the bulk boundary correspondent constrains us to say, well, you have uh, a pair of helical edge states, you have two edge states in one, in one edge and then other two edge states in the left edge. But in the case for linear polarization, we can draw a line, for instance, in the E minus zero one, and we can notice that we can, uh, these two edge states are suppressed, allowing these two edge states to survive and therefore transport, uh, make transport of uh, a spin polarized, uh, uh, just a spin, a spin current. And in the case of circular polarization, when we you draw the, the line over E minus zero one, we have something rather similar, but not that much because remember one spin doesn't like to absorb light. So in this case, we have just this state suppressed, allowing us to have a current which is a spin polarized. Here is some detail about how the, the light is being absorbed by the system. Uh, having uh, all the channels studied in, de uh, studied in detail. And we can see that most of the transmission, it's, uh, it's going through the elastic channel and the inelastic channel accounts for the reflection. So this, uh, this is a clear signature that the transport is affected by the higher order replicas. So there's a lot of, inf of information uh, right here. So uh, I, I, I can invite you to, to go to the the, the former resource where we have published this research, research if you want to uh, get uh, more detail about this. So now I, I, I'm trying to emphasize the fact that we will be, uh, we have been using uh, systems with no rush for spin, spin orbit coupling of, or if this rush stays has not uh, any important contribution. However, we will try to bring the Rashba spin orbit coupling uh, back. So we will have the Kane Mele model, such a twins uh, topological insulator again. And we will try to revive this, uh, this uh, coefficient again, yet again. In this case, we would like, we would like to look what is the effect of the Rashba uh, over the edge states. And in this case, we have yet again 
the uh, the spectrum of our uh, flocket system and we will see that the spin polarization of uh, the replicas start to depolarize in this case we can see that since now we are allowing the inclusion of the rush respect we can associate this uh, beige color over here with processes of a spin flip so in this sense, if we allow uh, hybridization with higher order replicas with the spin flip processes, we can also make the topological edge states to make a spin flip. So this is another handle and another knob to, to control the edge states. So these results are just in preparation, but I will show you some results that we've been gathering so far. So, one of the first tests that we made with uh, high, uh, higher rush of a coupling is, uh, is something that is shown here. Take the incident modes for going from the right to the left. We, we, we add an energy that we know we have a, a topological edge state from the native system. We see that we have a, a spin up polarization really sharp from uh, starting from the, the this contact. However, when this state start to hybridize with higher order replicas, we see this uh, Ravi oscillation pattern. And this suggests that maybe this uh, the circular polarization radiation start to decouple the spin uh, the spin degrees of freedom and the orbital spin of freedom. So when this wave packet reaches the left, uh, the, the left terminal, we see that the process is effectively a spin flip process. So how does the wavelength of this wave packet depends on the rush of a, uh, a spin orbit coupling? We don't really know so far. Uh, I mean, we don't really know. This is the last part of, of these slides, but so far we didn't really know what what's uh, what's happening right here but we played with the uh, rush for spin orbit coupling and we saw two different uh, scenarios now we are using the the blue color because this is the spin down and take the incident modes from the spin down going from right for a determined rush back configuration we can study the spin flip transmission growing from the right to the left. And we see that for certain values of a uh, rush bar, uh, coupling, we see that we can uh, uh, reach an efficiency of a spin flip transmission close to 0 0.8. But we can also start to play around with the rush bar spin orbit coupling going from the right to the left. And we can reach a configuration such as we have the same spin going from the right, right to the left. So this imposed two scenarios because we can modify the rush by using an external field such as a, a gate field or, or an, yes, a gate field, electric field perpendicular to the sample, or we can play around with the, the size of the device. But when we know the dependence of the rush bar with the wavelength, we can uh, use both, both approaches at once and design any, any material uh, uh, on demand. So if we look a little bit in detail, the transmission, we can see that we can reach in the most ideal scenario a 0 0.8 spin flip transmission. So this is uh, the more or less the very same scenario that we had in, in the past with the spin polarized uh, to enable photocurrents without accounting the presence of the uh, Rashva uh, spin orbit coupling. But now we know the roots of some of the transmission coefficients that we know now that are part of the spin flip processes. So in order to know if this both uh, uh, spin degrees of freedom or orbital degrees of freedom at the couple, we have to see that there's a dependence on the wave number with the uh, rush by spin orbit coupling that is linear. In this case, we will know for sure that this only depends on the rush by spin orbit coupling. And it turned out to be the case. If you look the wave function profile from the perpendicular or perpendicular, this is, yes, this is perpendicular and this is the uh, uh, this is perpendicular and this is longitudinal you can see that uh, all the wavelength of this the uh, of this uh, wave packet depends 
linearly in the Rashba coupling. So whenever you can control the Rashba uh, spin orbit coupling and you know the, the, the length of your device, you can control if you want a device that is as a spin flipper or is uh, something that preserves the spin polarization that uh, your incident mode has. So it's just in order to wrap, uh, the wrap up, we can see that we can generate currents using light in the zero bias regime, which is the photocurrent uh, by providing the a hybridization with the continuum and using the circular decreasm. Light can control which kind of current that you want and in one way direction, and you can modify this by changing the handness of the polarization. And the light can also use be used to induce a spin flip processes to enable by the size or the amplitude of the Rashba coupling. And in this case, light is it's, uh, has a secondary role because uh, it, it just allows the decoupling of both, but the Rashba will uh, affect now the topological edge states. So that's, uh, that's all of my talk. So if you have any questions, I encourage to go both of our websites and thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Esteban, for this very nice, very clear and very interesting talk. Um, are there comments, questions from the audience? Eduardo, you have a question? Yes, I have a question. Re really nice talk, Esteban. Thank you. Very neat, I think. Uh, and well, I, my question is about the these oscillations in the spin flip, and, yeah. and this that you show. I think is the slide thirty, the uh, two previous one. Okay. So then, how these regions compare to the energy wavelength of the the Fermi wavelength to that energy? Because you are plotting um, one energy, right? Yes, this is one. Yes, this is one energy in particular. This energy that we see in the green dashed dashed line. That it's around point around 15. fifteen. Yes, yes. And do you know the the Fermi wavelength to that energy? Because uh, I was wondering if these oscillations has something to related to that no to be honest uh, uh no I, I i mean but yeah. we're taking the fermi energy to be this one uh, this one uh, in order to perform the you know the scattering wave function plot so we are taking exactly that uh that that energy so uh uh, my, my uh, if I understand my results, this wavelength is exactly that we were plotting here. Okay. Probably, so this, I, I, you, I just have to check. But yeah, it's really nice work and it's in preparation or? Sort yeah, of, yeah, 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 it's in preparation. Okay. We, have to, we have to polish some of uh, the conclusions to convey the message more clearly because uh, we haven't found some results that are uh, are related because using a, uh, uh, light for inducing a spin flip, this is something that uh, has uh, has some history because in the last paper we have a we had a question a, a referee that suggested to 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 discuss the role of a Rashba coupling. And we, we by mistake, we increased the Rashba coupling more than we wanted. And we saw that the efficiency of this plot, like this one, increased more than one. Okay. So then we realized that this, this was part of a spin flip process because it, it was taking uh, angular momentum from the other species. So that's how we arrived for, to, to, to this, uh, to this uh, study. Well, really nice. I think it's, well, it's really relevant. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Other, other comments and, and questions? Uh, 
I have a short question, which is actually not related to this talk. You mentioned you defended your PhD thesis recently. Was it on 27 of December? Yes, that's true. <laughs> well, I follow Lewis in YouTube <laughs> and I accidentally joined your PhD defense. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, it was it stay. was already at the at the session of, of, of questions, so it was not that that interesting <laughs> as I left. But I was surprised that some two days after Christmas, you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because postdoc contracts are kind of yeah. You have to be here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Where will you go for postdoc? I'm going Sea Grenoble. That's great. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm kind of excited. I, I, I'm already craving croissants. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Okay. Are there other comments, questions from the audience? Well, if I may, I, I can. I have another question that I, I didn't see. And in the slide 21, you put a color in the bands. And I didn't know, or I forgot if you mentioned, what is the meaning of the colors? The zero to okay. minus two. Okay. I will show you the, the actual formula right here because I forgot to put it right there. Okay. <laughs> this is the, the actual formula. So ah. this color means the, the following thing. It's the spectral function over the, a, a, a fixed K. So, each, each of the points that compose any of these band structure are the wave function over some, some weight that you are interest, interested in this, in this case, we are uh, taking the, the weight of the wave function over the replica zero. And uh, in this case, well, the spins are isolated. So this is just the replica zero over say the spin up, right? So because why the replica zero? Because we are using the elastic channel as a reference. So this is the, the one that, that we care about. Okay, so then it's like a density of states then? Yes. Okay, well, to each replica or so. Okay, but thank yes, you. Yes, and in this case, yeah, it's, it's just the replica zero and in the case, of uh, right here, it's a little bit more complex because it's over over each replica and also a spin polarized. Yeah. Okay. But really nice figures. Eh? Ah, thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. And if there are no other questions, then I think we can proceed with the poster session as well, right? Yes, right. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah. Let me stop.